The absolute best thing about making stuff gotta be the cleaning up part. It's so fun and... Oh, wait a minute. It's not fun at all. But I guess I gotta do it anyway. It's just like what my mom used to say. You gotta clean that room before you play those games. That's definitely what my mom sounded like. <clears throat> yep. So, I have this old coffee table made out of oak shit. No, it's not made out of oak shit. Just, just oak boards. Anyway, it was old. It had close to a million watermarks, coffee rings and whatnot on it. And in general, it just didn't look good anymore. So, I decided that I would turn this table into another kind of table. Or shelf. Actually, I don't know what it's called, so... I just go with behind the sofa shelf. Well, the first thing I had to do was to rip it into pieces and I cut them all to the desired width here since it didn't need to be super precise but more just what I thought would fit well behind the sofa. You will see me cut some white and some narrow boards and the white boards will be the shelf top while the narrow boards go under and becomes a part of the structure and you will see what I mean by that later on. After ripping them, I ran them through my thickness planer and I got them looking fresh AF. Then I needed some thinner boards for a box, so I ripped one of the narrow ones on my bandsaw and that did the job in a staggering 4 hours and 2 business days, which might be a new world record. God, I really want a new bandsaw. Then, with some magic from my miter saw, I ended up with five boards in different lengths that surprisingly had the right measurement to become a tiny box. Quite lucky, actually. Then, with some glue and clamps, I left the box by itself and continued with the boards. Some of the narrow boards will be turned into legs, and since they come from a table, there were some screw holes in them, so I inspected the boards and marked which side went towards the wall by writing wall on them. Furthermore, I can assure you that my house has baseboards, just like most other houses, which led my mind to conclude that a removal of wooden material close to the floor would potentially help the matter of legs getting closer to the wall. Some might even say that a certain leg-to-wall contact could eventually become a future factor by this decision. And what I mean by that is actually I just removed some of the material in the bottom so the wooden legs could go all the way to the wall without interfering with the baseboards. Yep. And after removing most of the material on the bandsaw, I used a file to finalize the shape of this leg. The next day I wanted to finish the box, so I started out by using a block plane to finish the top edge of the box before I had to act like a playground, which usually is better when the sun shines, and luckily it did. Right in my face. Then with one leg having the right shape, I could remove the majority of the material on the other legs on the bandsaw, so I drew some lines and I prepared for that. After some bandsaw action, I went to trim the rest of the legs with my router and a template bit, which you will not see me do since I got a phone call, I stopped the recording and I did not start the recording again after the phone call had ended. After a while and some template routing, I managed to hit the record button again, just in time for a little bit of sanding. 
and what I'm sending is the box and this box will go under the top shelf and will hold a power strip for charges and so. And when you have a power strip, you usually also have a plug to plug it into the outlet. So I wanted to drill a hole in the side of the box and I decided that a big hole that could allow me to run the plug through the hole would ease the future use of it. But I decided not to bring the camera. It did record while I was drilling the hole though, just not me actually doing it because it was busy recording boards that didn't move instead. At least it was ready for some sanding action when I came back. And since I already messed up two times with the camera, why not make it free? So here I am trying to show you that I had a thin strip of oak from earlier that I sanded to size so it would fit this tension gap that was in one of the boards from earlier when it was a table. After overly dramatizing the episode of sanding the strip, I filled the hole with glue. Then I tap the strip in there with a pestle from a mortar set. Yep, those kind of tools are also welcome here in my workshop. Then I let it dry, obviously, before I went on with my project. I still hadn't finished all of the legs after trimming, so I used some files to soften the edges before calling it a day. The next day I went back to the thin strip mortar board and pestle board thing and cut off most of the strip. You see me tapping the blade and that's just to give a little bit more space between the blade and the wood so I will not make any marks in the board when running it through the table saw. The rest I can remove with a plane. This board will become a shelf top, but will not have any legs to support it, and because of that it gets some taller runners mounted underneath, and this top will be mounted perpendicular to the main sofa shelf thing, since it's a chaise long or a chaise lounge as you say it in English. I hope that's how you say it in English, actually I'm not sure. But anyway, it's that kind of sofa we got, and you will see that later, but this part is more or less done now, I just need to fasten the runners and bake the edges, which more or less leaves me with the main structure. I still had the old table leg mount pieces here and I decided to use them to mount the legs here as well. So I used my miter sled and a thin 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 rip thin strip thin rip guy yeah this jig that my brother made on his 3D printer and I must say I am super impressed with how well that turned out but that's fun on the story. We are talking wooden legs here not plastic stuff. Anyway, I held them in place with a clamp and then I cut them. Nothing special. Then for some reason I don't have any evidence that I actually made rabbit cuts here, but you will see me do it soon, so no worries. Here I used the old leg mounting pieces and I marked them with numbers on the corresponding piece so I know where it goes later on when disassembling and reassembling again after the finishing. And here you see me getting ready for some rabbit cuts. I cut rabbits on the two legs that are placed on each end of the shelf.
Then I drilled some holes for some dowels to help keep it perpendicular and finished it by installing the support pieces. I didn't cut the under part of the shelf pieces, let's call them structure pieces, too lengthy yet. But here I am trying to measure and mark how long they need to be. Never do that again. And also I get my ass kicked while doing so. Come on, man. And then I try to figure out where to mount the box. That I made for the power strip. After marking, I went ahead and made lap joints on the two structure pieces so they would be easy to connect later on. I really need to sharpen my chisels, and I actually did that right after this project, but I should have done it earlier, I was just so lazy, and even though it definitely would have helped, I just didn't do it. So kids, remember what they always tell you, don't do dowels, stay in shop and sharpen your chisels. Then I marked where the box goes using the thickness of the box as a reference for my marking gauge and made some marks. Of course, I made sure to stay as much as possible in front of the camera since this kind of job is not for everyone to see. He's blocking you. Then I removed some material so I could get started with the jigsaw. And my main jigsaw need a new clamp holder, so I just had this 10 or 15 year old jigsaw that I bought cheap as my first power tool ever. Or oh, oh, was that a sander? I tried using it and it did well. Until it didn't do well. Let's just say that at some point it got tired of old days. So it was time to say... Hello there, Mr. Japanese Pulsar. And hello there, Mr. Reciprocating Saw. Then it was time for some cleaning up with a not too sharp chisel. And if I had been re-evaluating how to get this side nice and flat, then maybe I would have used my router and a template bit with a straight edge underneath, but here I am looking stupid with a chisel that's as sharp as a wet towel. Hello there. I didn't want a 90 degree meetup between the top pieces, so I decided that a 45 degree meetup would be better. It kinda hides the gap a bit, so that's what I did. But the first cut were not perfect, so I went back with tape and an extra clamp and that did the trick. Now I just needed to make a hole for the box. No, a hole for the power box. What an amazingly cool name for a box that holds a power strip. Oh. 
obviously, freehanding this would be super cool. And what could go wrong? Well, actually, nothing did go wrong, but it very well could have gone wrong. And I should have just used the resting base to help make the cut. But uh, I, I don't have any excuse. And I actually also did it later on. If only I had a tool like, I don't know, a jigsaw, that would have been really nice at this point. I don't have any footage of me making the lid, but it was made back when I made the box and then I just drilled a hole in the middle of it so I could lift it and then I made these indentations so I could run cables through the side of it. To make the top piece similar with the bottom piece, I used a template bit and went the opposite way around the hole. Because I had this idea that since oak splinters so easily, that maybe it would help with a climb cut. It ended fine and I was well aware that I needed to pay more attention to the router and be careful since it would have the risk of running away. To hold the lid I made these tiny triangle pieces that would go in each corner and to find the right place to glue them I put it all upside down and used the lid as a spacer. And to mount the box I mounted the screw in each end, one going into the leg and one going into this tiny block that I put next to it. And right after I tried mounting the box, I noticed something odd about the structure because I definitely must have been sleeping or something. The rabbit on the end leg were protruding the structure piece and uh, oh yeah, three of the legs got mounted the wrong way. Looks a bit odd in the circumstances. <clears throat> Actually, I noticed that they were installed the wrong way already when I installed the box. I just installed the box and the leg the right way and then I showed you the odd result of one leg going the right way and three legs going the opposite way. I still had to turn the legs around though and that was actually a bit lucky because I didn't account for the leg that supposed to be in the corner to have some space between the side of the leg and the wall because of another baseboard. There's like a baseboard on the back and then there's a baseboard on the side. So because of that I actually had to move it in a little. So I guess it was a good decision installing the legs the opposite way. I still had to recut the rabbit on the structure piece since it was too long now. And when you cut tiny pieces, don't cut them like this so it can get jammed between the blade and the fence. That could end up being a bad experience for you. And that's just stupid. Then I drilled holes for some new dowels. I remounted the legs. And the box. And then there was this piece. This one will help hold the shelf top that doesn't have any legs. It will also hold it together with the other shelf top so they don't slip away from each other. This piece will be mounted where the old rabbit were and where the legs used to go. So I removed most of the material on my router table doing it in a couple of passes. And don't take off too much when using a router, just five, six millimeters or quarter of an inch if you speak that language. Be patient and be safe. And don't ask me why I tried taking off 11 millimeters in the beginning. At least I noticed and I guess that's something. As it was getting time to sand, I marked all my mounting numbers that I did earlier on the side while I did the face and then rewrote them on the face again after I finished sanding the surface. I broke the edges of all boards with two or three passes of a sanding block.
then I put finish on one side only, mainly the back side, leave it for some minutes before coming back and put some finish on the front side as well. Always put finish on both sides if possible. Would have a tendency to bend cotton bow if it's only exposed to moisture on one side, so keep that in mind. And the reason why I start with the back side of the board mainly is because then I can finish the front and then rest the piece on its back side without leaving any potential marks. It's not really necessary, but still. After some days, it was time to stack them all up again since we were heading inside. When I put them all inside, I left them there to temper it for some days before installing it. But before installing it, I yet again had to clean up and I'm actually starting to believe that woodworking is actually just a cleaning up simulator. After some preparation I started by assembling the structure pieces, or the base pieces first, which was quite easy since I marked all the pieces and knew exactly where each and every one went. When it was all assembled I put some felt pads on the back side and on the underside so it wouldn't grind up against the wall or the floor. Then when the structure was standing, I could go ahead and put the shelf tops on and attach them to the base by screws from the underside. The only thing left now was the side piece and that part just needed runners and then the tiny edge piece that keeps it all connected to the main part. And then, in a matter of minutes, and when I say minutes I mean like 20-30 minutes, it was all done. Now I can enjoy my coffee while leaning back and not even think about reaching to the table to get it. First world problem solved. And also, it is kinda nice being able to just charge the phone while scrolling on the couch when those lazy Sundays drops by. And last thing before you go. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and if you did, maybe consider subscribing to a small YouTube channel. Doesn't have to be this one, just anyone. Bye.